First up, we welcome back to our studios emotional expert John Rushton, who today is going to talk about creating a self image and how people perceive it. John, welcome back. Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much for joining us again. So, John, the, the whole idea of creating an image you know, for yourself, you yeah. know, spending money, spending time, however it's done, is that something that you see a lot of you know, in your work? I see quite a bit of it. I see people want to have a little bit nips and tucks just to remove this and do this and whatever people like to do if they have a little bit of spare cash. It's when it becomes obsessive and you have an image which is not you, it's of somebody else. And that is the problem because if it is of somebody else, it is not you. Mm -hmm. You are not thinking and talking and walking the person you should be. Mm -hmm. You're trying to emulate somebody else or an image of somebody else based on, wow, I think they're super cool. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying, I think they're super cool. And there's nothing wrong with saying, I love their clothes. I wouldn't mind buying something like that. Because we all do it. We do our houses like that. We buy our cars. We even do our gardens by seeing somebody else's, oh, that's nice, and we copy it. Mm. That's what we do. Everybody does that around the world. But when it comes to you as a person, a sentient human being, with a mind and a thought process of your own, and you start to actually leave that and go somewhere else, you are leaving your actual stability. You're actually looking at something else. And whilst the, the journey from A to B in a transient time may be good, just over a year because you're doing this, it's all very invigorating, exciting and wonderful and marvellous and fluffy and cuddly mm. and all this kind of thing. When it's finished, then what? Where are you? Because your perception of yourself may not be what everybody else's perception is. People will love you for who you are. If you try and be somebody else, they will love that somebody else. So when they find the real you, they are disappointed. So you're mm. cre creating a disappointment factor. You're creating something which is not genuine. It's mm. disingenuous, in fact. You're creating an image, a Hollywood image. Mm. I mean, it's interesting because I think in relationships that can be said as well, isn't it? When you've yes. got relationships, you try and be somebody else or you try and, or the person that you're with is trying to be some, somebody else. So that really transcends to that as well then, does it? You know, when you're trying to be somebody else, it's, that's really not what you should be doing. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. You, you should be yourself. And, and if you marry somebody or you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you say, oh, I'm going to change them, then you're with the wrong person. Mm. Because, you know, we all have foibles, we all have faults, none of us are perfect. You should love that person, warts and all. Mm. Even their funny little bits and their silly little bits and probably their annoying little bits as well. But if you don't love that, what are you loving? Are you loving a self-image of yourself based on that person that you want to change for you? Because that other person will eventually get fed up. They will get cheesed off and they'll possibly meet somebody who really will love them for who they are. And then the relationship comes to an end. Mm. And that's not uncommon. It starts the bickering, the arguing and all these sort of falling out. And will you do this? Well, I'm going to do that. And then you go your own separate way. And eventually there's nothing left. You've mm. broken it. You've broken the spell. You've broken the harmony and the love which should be there all the way through. And when you're working with people, John, do you find, what's the most common thing that you find when you're working with people when you're dealing with the emotions? Is there a theme that runs through when people approach you about anything, about any, any sort of emotional aspect of their lives? Is there a common theme that people approach you for? It varies from person to person and situation to situation. But one of the, one of the most common things which people of all ilks and areas in life actually come out with is about themselves. I would like. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because if you don't know, nobody else does. So you've got to take charge of who you are. But by the same token, if you are a couple, it's I turns into we and me turns into us. If it's all me and him or me and her, then what is the relationship? Are you just sort of shacking up for the sake of convenience? Because that's how it often ends up. And that is becoming more and more and more common. And then when it's happened two or three times, you start to blame the other partner. Well, or the partners or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But you know, the common denominator in all this is you. It's nobody else, it's yourself. And you've got to look at yourself and think, well, if it's going wrong time and time and time and time again, it's me. Mm. I'm the common one, not the other people. Mm. It's me. 
mm. I'm the common denominator. And so you've got to understand that, you know, you've got to give and take. And it's not give what you want to give and take what you think you ought to have. It's actually understanding the give and take of what that other person needs as well. Because it's understanding the harmony and that four-letter word, which is rarely used, love. Mm. The love has got to be there. If the love isn't there, the like can be there. The empathy can be there. But if the love isn't there, it's eventually going to fragment and break, break down and nothing's going to happen. And that's a sad state of affairs. And that is happening more and more today than ever before. I mean, why is that? Why do we find it so difficult to actually express their feelings? And I mean, it all sounds so, you make it sound so wonderfully simple. <laughs> but, you know, it's not, is it? Obviously, because, we, you know, there's so many things in the world happening today. And people, you know, we'll be watching the programme, can relate to what you're saying. Some people won't relate to it at all. Mm -hmm. Why is it, John, that we find it so hard as an individual ourselves to express what we need to express, express our feelings, really? I suppose. We've got into a society which has this awful thing called political correctness, mm. you know, which I absolutely detest. And I don't respect anybody who is politically correct at all. I think you should say what you want. You're not in charge of anybody else's happiness. You're not in charge of how other people think and feel. You are in charge of you. And providing you're not going to be overtly rude, you're entitled to say exactly who, what you want to say, how you want to say it, and how you think. That is how the world progresses. That's how science changes. That's how we evolve, by telling people who we are, what we are. If you never tell me about yourself, and I completely keep annoying you, I will never know. And if you say, oh, why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry, I didn't know I was doing this. You know, well, I didn't want to get you upset. You haven't upset me. I'm really pleased. I don't <laughs> want to upset you. You know, it's yes. this kind of thing. Yeah. And you've got to say it. And if other people say, mm. well, I'm offended. Well, you know, people who keep saying they're offended are stupid. Because what it means is you've given your permission and authority to somebody else. And now they've offended you. You may not like what they say. You may get slightly upset. But to get offended time and time again, this makes you look actually worthless mm. because this doesn't give you any credibility at mm. all. So you've got to be open and honest with people. And one of the things people are frightened of doing is actually saying, you know, I quite like you as a person. You're really quite nice. You don't have to say it in that word. You say it in your own terms, your own words. But people should say that more and more often mm. because, you know, People do actually pick up on it, even those gruff people that don't like to say anything about anybody. Mm. You know, if you say something nice about them, they do take it to heart. And it does make them feel better. And it makes them a little bit more mellow themselves. Because this is what we're all about as human beings. It's the interaction of humanity. It's how we get on. It's how we communicate. It's how we get what we want to do, how we feel happier in life, and how we understand life, mm. and how we feel more contented. Because we know that the people around us like us for whom we are. We can't like everybody in life. Mm. It's virtually impossible. But we can like the people around us. Yes. And I mean, and the people who, you know, talking about to the beginning of the conversation, we were talking about the people that, you know, spend money and do things to change themselves. How do we perceive those those people? How do we how do how do we look at them? Do we look at them any differently because they're changing or do we just accept or should we just accept what they're doing? Mainly, we just accept that they are changing. The people who are changing themselves and having all the plastic surgery done and, and buy specially designer clothes because it's got a, a Gucci or Chanel or mm. Ferragamo or whatever label on it, you know, it is look good, feel good, and, and you are your shop window, so whatever you look like and whatever you say is part and parcel of your shop window, so that is important. But over and above that, people will like you for exactly who you are. Mm. So if you start adding more and more and more, they'll say, oh, that's nice. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll say, what on earth are they doing? So it's really the personality. It is indeed. Keep your personality is yes, what you're is. saying. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. And then that personality is really important to show people exactly who you are. Yes, because they love your personality. It's the, your personality they are talking to. They're not talking to your dress or your hair or anything else. That is a visual aspect which they, is pleasing towards them. But mm. anything other than that, they're talking to you. You're the person that's going to make something. And that, that's the bit they're going to really like and enjoy and fall in love with. Nothing else. Because if mm. they fall in love with an image, 
It's like the Hollywood facade. You go into mm. Hollywood, if you ever go to Hollywood and look, and you see these fabulous facades. Mm. But when you open the door, it's just weeds and scaffolding behind. Mm. It is a facade, and it comes off well in a film, but it's only manufactured. Mm. It's not real. John, it's fascinating as always. Thank you so much for coming on the My show again. Lovely to see you.